Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about anary classes in Java. And here is our outline. We will talk about member classes and static member classes. We will see how we can create instances of anary classes. We will talk about the visibility of the anary classes. And finally, we will talk about anary classes and static variables. Let's get started. What is an anary class? An anary class is a class inside another class. Just like we can write an if statement inside another if statement, we can write a class inside another class. We will talk about two types of inner classes. We have the member class and we also have a static member class. So we will write an inner class that is not static and we will write another one that is static. Now let me tell you this. An inner class can do the following. First of all, it can access the private members of the containing class. Also, we can have a private access modifier for the inner class. As we said before, a private access modifier can be used on members of classes. And this inner class is going to be a member of the containing class. So we can use the private access modifier. So this is one benefit of using inner classes. If we want to restrict the access of a class to one class only, we can define it as a private inner class. Now let's start with the examples. We will talk about member classes. Have a look at this class first of all. It is called inner. It has a private integer x, a constructor, and a getter and a setter. Now let's take this class and put it inside another class. As you see over here, we have a class that is called outer, and inside it, we are declaring the inner class. So now the inner class is an inner class inside the outer class. So the outer class contains the inner class. And specifically, the inner class is a member class, okay? So when we create a class like this inside another class, it is a member class. And as you see over here, we didn't specify a visibility modifier for the inner class. We will talk about this in a little bit. For now, all you need to know is that the visibility of the inner class is default visibility. Now have a look over here. As you can see over here, I'm trying to make the variable x a static variable. This will give us an error. So member classes cannot contain static variables. This is because Java is going to associate the inner class with an object of the outer class, as you will see in a little bit. So since the inner class is related to the object of the outer class, it cannot has its own static variables. This is because, as we said before, static variables are class variables. They are not instance variables. And since the inner class will be associated to an instance of the outer class, it cannot have static variables. Now, there is one exception. A member class can contain final static variables, all right? But this over here is only a static variable. And if you forgot the final keyword, we use it to declare constants in Java. So now let's see another example. We still have the outer class. Now it has a private integer. It is called outer x. And inside the outer class, we are declaring the inner class. It is a class that is called inner. It has a private integer, inner x, and it has a method. This method is called show x. And inside it, we are printing the outer x concatenated with the inner x. So as you see over here, the inner class can access the outer x, even if the outer x is a private variable. So member classes are able to access the private members of the outer class. In other words, in the inner class, we can access variables and methods of the outer class, even if they are private. Now, what if we want to create an object from the inner class? First of all, suppose that we want to create an object inside the outer class. So suppose that we created a method that is called demo, for example. And inside this method, we want to create an object from this class over here. So since we are working inside the outer class, we don't care about the visibility of the inner class. So inside the demo method, we are able to create an inner object like this. The type of the object is inner. It is called inner and you are going to allocate it inside the memory. After that, we can use this object normally. For example, I will access the inner x, assign it to be equal to three, and then I will call the show x method. Now let's try to use the demo method. So inside the main class and inside the main method, I will create an outer object. So this is an object of type outer and we are instantiating it. After that, I will call the demo method of the outer object. In this case, zero and three will be printed. Zero is the value of the outer X and the three is the value of the inner X. Because after we call the demo method, we will create an inner object. We will assign the inner X to be equal to three and then we will call the show X method. So the outer x will be printed and the inner x value is 3 because we assigned it to be equal to 3 inside the demo method. Now suppose that we want to create an object from the inner class inside the main class. So now we are working outside the outer class. So of course the visibility of the inner class is important. 
In this case, the visibility is default visibility. So we are able to access the inner class inside the same package. So now let's suppose that the main class and the outer class are inside the same package. This means that the main class and the inner class are inside the same package because the inner class is inside the outer class. So we are able to create an object of the inner class inside the main class. So let's do that. Previously, I told you that the inner class will be associated to an object of the outer class. This is why we need an outer object to create an inner object. So have a look over here. We are creating an outer object. And after that, we will use the outer object like this. We want to create an object of type inner. So have a look. Using the name of the outer class, we can access the name of the inner class. So this over here is the type of the object. After that, we'll give it a name. The name of the object will be inner, for example. Now, in order to instantiate an inner object, we will use the outer object. And this object was created over here, all right? After that, we'll use the dot operator and we can call the constructor of the inner class. As you can see, we are instantiating an inner object. So this statement over here instantiates an inner object and assigns the reference to this variable. So now we can use this object normally. For example, I will assign the inner x to be equal to 5 and then I will call the show x method. So this method will print the outer x and the inner x. So 0 and 5 will be printed, all right? Now let's talk a little bit about visibility. First of all, the visibility of the outer class is public. So we can use the outer class in any other class. And up until now, the visibility of the inner class was default visibility. This means that we can only access the inner class in the same package. So suppose that we try to create an inner object in a class outside the package of the outer class. Of course, we will get an error, even if the outer class is public. What's important is the visibility of the inner class. Of course, we can create an object of type outer because outer is public, but we cannot create an object of type inner, all right? Now let's use the public visibility modifier. So now the inner class can be accessed from any other class. So we are able to create inner objects in any other class, all right? And now we can use the private access modifier. And this is very interesting about inner classes because as you know, we cannot use the private access modifiers on the classes. But as you can see, we are able to use it on inner classes. So now the inner class is a private. This means that we cannot create inner objects outside the outer class. We can only create inner objects inside the outer class, all right? And this is straightforward. Just like we cannot access the outer x variable outside the outer class, we cannot create an inner object outside the outer class. And this is because they are both private. So now let's talk about static member classes. So we still have the same thing. We are going to declare a class inside another class, but now it will be static. So have a look over here. Now the inner class is a static class and I didn't specify a visibility modifier. Of course, we can specify any visibility modifier that we want. In this case, the visibility of the inner class is default visibility. Now, since the inner class is static, I changed the outer x to be static because I want to access it inside the show x method. So to be able to access members of the outer class inside a static inner class, these members should be static. Previously, we said that we cannot access non-static members inside a static method. And over here, we have the same thing. We cannot access non-static members inside a static inner class. This is why I changed the outer x to be static. And notice that now we can have static members inside the inner class. So if you want to have static members, then the inner class should be static, all right? Now have a look over here. We still have the same code inside the demo method. We are creating this inner object, we are assigning inner x to be equal to 3, and then we are calling the show x method. So nothing will be changed inside the outer class. The difference is outside the outer class. So now suppose that we want to create an inner object inside the main class. And remember that the inner class has default visibility. So to be able to access it inside the main class, suppose that the main class and the outer class are inside the same package. So now if we try to do the same thing as before, we will get an error because now the inner class is a static member class. So we will get an error because we are trying to instantiate an inner object using an outer object. So to instantiate a static member class, we will not use an outer object because the static member class is no longer associated to the object. It is static, so now it belongs to the class. So to create an object, we will do something like this. The type of the object is outer.inner, so we have the same thing. It is called inner and we will instantiate it like this. We will use the name of the class and after that we will access the constructor which is called inner. Of course, we will use the new operator. And after that we can access the inner object normally. And this is it. Now let me tell you this. There are more types of inner classes. 
but I explained these two types to give you an idea so that later on if you face inner classes you would know what they are okay now you might ask why would you use an inner class as we said the special thing about inner classes is that you can declare them as private so if you want to restrict the access of a class to one class only then you can declare it as a private inner class and this is it thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video